Mason Hill cattle. Premium Wagyu beef. The good stuff. <laughs> Wagyu, Jason here. Hey, welcome back. We're gonna do ourselves a little favor and throw some corned beef in the crock pots today. We're actually gonna bring that up a notch, so we're gonna do Wagyu beef, corned beef. Uh, we're gonna have a little taste competition here. We're gonna do uh, some of uh, a Wagyu corned beef from Costco, and then a Mason Hill cattle Wagyu corned beef. Um, I think this will be a great little taste test. Uh, I've already pulled both the Wagyu beefs out of their packages. Uh, I can tell the big difference in quality of marbling and, and grating and things like that out of the two. Um, but we won't know for sure until we taste test. So, pretty quick segment we're going to do here today. We're going to take both of these um, Wagyu beef and they're going to be, they're already cured corned beef. So these have been put in a salt brine for X amount of days. Uh, this one over here is the Wagyu beef corn. Uh, excuse me, the Mason Hill cattle Wagyu beef. This one over here is the Snake River Farms Wagyu beef. As you can tell, they're both pretty well marbled. I would definitely, you know, give the nod to the Mason Hill cattle one. It's just got a whole lot more intense marbling. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put both of those in the crock pot. We've got two separate crock pots. Inside of both crock pots, we have a mixture of uh, potatoes, onions, and carrots. And so the trick with this is is we want to put the, the corned beef directly on top of the carrots and, and potatoes. It'll kind of elevate it up above the moisture. The moisture we've got is we used four cups of water in each of the different crock pots. And then we're going to put six ounces of beer in each of the crock pots. This one happens to be a spruce tip ale. Let's see how it tastes. That's what I was thinking. It's going to go... It's from Rogue. It's a pretty good uh, Rogue here in Portland. Pretty, pretty good brewery. Um, this one happens to be the Pilsner brewed with Alaska spruce tips. And I chose that beer because it's a light ale, but it's also going to have a little bit of those spruce tips. I think that's going to go pretty well with the corned beef. Because inside the corned beef, you already have a mixture that comes with each one of the corned beefs. It's a, it's essentially a pickling spice is what it is, pickling package. And so we're going to put that on top of the corned beef, but the flavors, and that spruce tip and then the vegetables and whatnot we have in that crock pot 10 hours or so it's going to be absolutely incredible so let's get to work here first we're going to take this mason hill cattle uh wagyu beef i mean look at the marbling on that thing it's absolutely incredible nice little guy we're going to put that right on top the next one we're going to put in is going to be the snake river well farms uh one from costco also again pretty good marbling nice little cut of beef it's got a little more fat to it. We're going to put that right inside of that crock pot. We're going to take these scissors and open up the uh, package of seasoning. We're going to put directly on top of the corned beef. This one from Costco is like Costco. Everything's much bigger. It's a little bit too much seasoning, so I'm going to go with maybe a quarter of that package. This one happens to be from a local um, butcher shop here in Portland, Oregon. They they uh, thought ahead and went ahead and made a bunch of um, corned beef with Mason Hill Cattle's uh, beef and they gave a smaller package of herbs and so I'm going to put this in here just enough to cover it. You don't want to cover way too much because you're going to lose a lot of that flavor and again I, I didn't even use that whole package. I used about a half of it. So uh, the final step we got to do is we got to put the beer in. So we're going to do six ounces in each crock pot. So going by feel that's about half and then if we go on this other one from Costco over here we do about half then all we got to do, it's pretty easy around here, put a lid on it, the second one, put a lid on it, 10 hours later, we're going to let them do their thing. We will, in the middle of it, uh, utilize my testy device that, if you watch any of the other videos, you know this is probably like the, the number one tool we like to use, the thermopen. This happens to be the MK, I think it's four, the uh, temperature dial rotates around for you. The USDA standards uh, want you to pull your corned beef at 145 or higher in temperature. We're gonna go higher. We have these things essentially in a steam bath with all the moisture that's at the bottom of, of the pot and then the vegetables and then the beef is on, set up on top of it. It's elevated a, a little bit. That's gonna allow us to cook a little bit longer but it's gonna keep that environment really, really, really moist. So like I said, we can go for about 10 hours 
and uh, see what it comes of this. So I do have some taste testers we'll put on video later on and uh, we'll see how the corned beef times two and or the corned beef battle uh, turns out. All right, so we've uh, we finished our both of our Wagyu corned beef. They both turned out just look amazing, just like they were supposed to. We got Austin over here. Uh, he's making himself a, a non-alcoholic beverage over here with, uh, I'm going to assume, some St. Patrick's Day flair. So we'll see how that goes as well. He is also going to be the taste tester for, uh, for the Wagyu beef here and see what we have. So in the preparation, all I did is I took those potatoes and uh, onions and carrots that the Wagyu was cooking on, put them on a platter, and then we'll just slice up the, uh, the corned beef here. What you'd want to do is you'd want to go against the grain when you're slicing this up. Oh, we got a potato. The potato was hiding there. So we want to go against the grain. So in this situation, we would just make a slice like this. I'm using what they consider a brisket knife. This knife is not serrated and not sharp. It's the craziest thing. So uh, it works really well for what we're doing here. But if we took that, and then on the same one over here, if we slice off some pieces here, this one looks like it was maybe cooked a little bit more done in temperature. We're going to do a taste test. Austin, are you going to be a taster? All right. So here's one. And that one turned out really good as well. Here's another one. So this is what it looks like when it's all cooked and, and everything. And when you know it's cooked correctly, you should be able to just kind of tear it apart. So super, super good. All right, Austin, you ready? Here we go. Let's see what we got for flavor. Try this one. I'll try it with you. How's that taste? Can you have another piece? Pretty good, huh? Let's try this one. So we had number one and we had number two. Here's number two. And that one's really good. And number two. Number one. Everybody can tell by the shape of what we have. This was the Mason Hill Wagyu beef. This was the, from Costco, Snake River Farms. And we both agreed that the Mason Hill was absolutely delicious. Um, cooked exactly the same. I didn't trick you, I just, yeah, I put them in front of you and you said which one you liked. Yeah, you can. So, um, anyway, that's all we were trying to do here today was make some really good corned beef. Turned out delicious, a little bit salty. If you wanted to plate this for your family or friends, this is what you do. You kind of just, excuse me, lay it across the top there and make the presentation to where it's got more than just potatoes and vegetables. It's got meat on top. Till next time. Order now at www.masonhillcattle.com.